Hopefully you can hear me. We've just had a few set up technical issues, so we're just all taking a, a deep breath. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Claire from Coppens, and I am delighted to welcome you to our graffiti writing with Posca workshop. And it's going to be hosted by the marvellous Keith Hopewell, uh, who you might, some of you might be able to see there. Um, uh, Keith is otherwise known as S. P zero, and we'll come on to more of that in a bit. So some of you may may know him as that. Um, before I hand over to Keith, there are a couple of points of housekeeping to highlight. So we are anticipating the session will last about an hour. So please get comfy. Um, we are recording the session, but um, all your screens and sound are off uh, for the session. If you have any questions, uh, then there's a little Q&A function that you should be able to see at the bottom of the screen. And if you can pop your questions in there, then that would be fantastic. Uh, Christine and Amy from the Cockpen team are on hand to answer questions and, and I will help out as well if I can. Um, and if possible, we might gently interrupt Keith as he's going through um, with some of the questions for him as well. Uh, we will hopefully have a little bit of time at the end of the session as well. If you do miss something, uh, don't worry. Uh, we will ask you to repeat it if, if we've got time. Um, if not, we are recording, as I've said, and we'll share that across social um, in the next couple of days. So it should be available uh, pretty quickly. So if you are sitting comfortably and uh, if Keith is all set, if you get a thumbs up, is he all good? He's all good. I'm going to hand over to Keith. and He's going to introduce us all to the world of graffiti writing. Very exciting. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Keith, SP0. Um, like today we're going to be doing uh, basically uh, writing, uh, graffiti style writing um, using Posca pens. So I thought first um, I'd give you an introduction to how to use the Posca pens, cult pens basically. So, uh, and then I did an alphabet as well. So you've got an idea, of some idea. Uh, I think we've shared this. Um, the alphabet. So this is the sort of writing we're going to be doing uh, and just showing you how to do that with the pens. So um, first I'll give you an introduction to the pens. Um, the Posca pens are a paint pen. Uh, they come in all different um, uh, like sizes. So you've got everything from uh, well, really tiny ones up to, well I haven't got the biggest one here but I've got a 7M which is quite a fat one but they go even bigger to uh, 16K. Um, like today we're going to be using 3Ms which is quite a thin nib you can see there which is quite nice it gives and we're going to be using uh, the uh, 5Ms as well so I'll show you quickly how to get the pen going whenever I do a workshop I always tell everyone first things first uh, make sure you have the lid on when you've got a new a pen it'll have a white tip originally because you've got to get the paint from inside the pen to outside the pen this is probably obvious but I just want to make sure like so put the lid on because it's paint and it will go everywhere and then you have to dab the pen to get the paint to come through there you go and then it's coming through so this is a different size as you can see to the last one there's not much in it but, but that's why these are the uh, the best for me because I'm a bit of a uh, Virgo perfectionist and I like to have a bit of control. So like uh, one thing I was saying the other day was uh, that when you ask people, well, I've done a lot of workshops where I do hats for people and um, every time I do a hat and, and you say you can put a word on, sorry, I can hear myself as trying to turn myself down. Yeah, um, every time you um, ask somebody uh, what they want on, written on their hat, then they get a bit lost. But if you just say, can I put your name on your hat? And then everybody knows their name. So, because if you think, right, put a word on a hat, what word would you choose? Like and you put on the spot and nobody knows. So we're just gonna go with our names today. If that's, it just makes it easier. Um, I'm gonna go with SP0, which is my tag. It stands for Solo Production Zero Talent since 1976. So um, that's the full one. So we're going to give it a rough, like first we're going to do, uh, we're going to uh, work on the paper first, and then I'm going to transfer it to a, a cap to show you that Posca's work on 
all different kinds of things from skate decks. Might be so. This is a skate deck I did um, with Posca um, to figures. So you got this guy created with Posca. That was a couple of years ago. Um, rocks. This is my cats on rocks. So just from the garden. Um, we got mini pots. <laughs> so like a little plant pot and even speakers but I've done everything from uh, VW buses to trainers to t-shirts uh, they work on everything like I say paint pens so they're different to markers markers are much more um, markerish <laughs> well these are basically paint in a pen so right so what, what is, I'm sorry to see Claire again I just want to let you know there's lots of uh, excitement about the different products that you were just sharing and and the, the examples that you've done so lo lots of love for those oh awesome Brilliant. that's that's good thank you um yeah if anybody's got any questions about the uh anything just give me a shout like um and uh i'll answer your questions for you i thought i'd show you um like now how i uh, basically go about if i'm going to write something in a sort of graffiti font i'm basically not a graffiti artist got to say that first because i will get um, hassle from actual graffiti artists or go you're a street artist and um, yeah like like uh, but basically I do a lot of spray painting and I work you know like with lots of different mediums and uh, I do stylized graffiti style writing as part of that so so that's what I'm gonna be working with today and showing you just so nobody says you know you don't walk away and go we're all graffiti artists now because a graffiti artist might get mad <laughs> Uh, so, Keith, I've just got a quick question. Um, things like the rocks, uh, do you have to prime the surface before you start? The rocks you didn't have to. Uh, there, there are some. Like, um, uh, I, it's good to prime surfaces sometimes. I use a spray lacquer, uh, which is pretty good. Like uh, With these rocks, it was straight onto it. Uh, same with the pot, uh, same with the uh, speaker. Everything was pretty much straight on. Um, but it is good to uh, to lacquer some things uh, bicycles uh, sometimes uh, it was the black didn't take on a bicycle for some reason but everything else did but if i spray lacquered it first it gave it kind of a it, um a coating that you you know you could work with so it's quite very you know the, the lacquer comes in very handy i always uh, you know have it just in case you need it because you never know I, I don't know what they put on the bicycles that made it like you know not really take because it, it goes on everything so uh, yeah, so I was going to go back to the writing, to actually writing your name. So with mine, we're going to do it quickly. To I'm going to do it small up here in the corner, just to show you. So if I, what I would start with is sort of writing it really scratchy. So SP zero. I always try and use like some uppercase and lowercase, just so it looks pretty cool like you know because sometimes like you thought ease can be boring i don't know see what that's just my opinion but if they i like the lowercase e i think it works really well so you just you know scratch it you know put your name so i mean keith doesn't really work so well that's why i changed it to sp0 for for her artwork really um but yeah so if you get a rough sort of one that you're happy with just like that and then we're going to go slightly bigger and base copy this this could give you some ideas so i've got the s here earlier it's always nice to have like a lip on and you know kind of fit at the bottom so we're gonna it looks really messy at the moment but it will turn out a lot better and then you want to thicken it up but it's nice to have some thicker areas, if this makes sense. Let's get the S done first so that I can show you. And once I've done this, I'm gonna transfer it to the cap to show you uh, how it works on the cap as well. So, so uh, yeah, if I go too fast at places or I'm not very clear, let me know, please. Like, I'm just trying to uh, speed up this part just so I can get you. Uh, so it makes more sense. I just had a question earlier, Keith, back to the uh, primer. Is that a matte primer or a gloss, or does it not really matter? Well, either. I mean, sometimes I'll go with a, uh, a gloss because it's nice to have a shine on after. But I think with, 
I've done this skate deck, uh, and that's I think that was with a. Uh, uh, I think it's Matt. I think it's pretty Matt. Right after, but yeah, it depends what you're what you're looking for as a final sort of. Um, like the pens themselves aren't uh, gloss, so they they've got an acrylic sort of um, feel to them, but like a more, more of a liquid acrylic. So the paint that's in them. So I definitely, um, you, you know, it, it depends what you want. I mean, if you were going to paint something with acrylic and then you wanted it to look, you know, have a shine to it, then you would, uh, uh, you know, paint uh, spray paint it with a gloss. Sorry, I can still hear myself on my phone. It's just really uh, off-putting. <laughs> We, we've got no we've got no feedback i think that's cool it's okay for us <laughs> that's all that's good i'm glad it's not affecting anyone else all right so we've got pretty much got the s now so if you can see from the original uh, it was just a very scratchy start like the peers now and uh yeah and, and so you just build it up like, and it's, you know, if you get it wrong the first time, it doesn't really matter. Like, and everyone is different. I was, I did a workshop with a young um, gentleman the other day and uh, he was, he worried a little bit. Hey, Sharky, I hope you're uh, listening today. Um, and he was a little bit worried about getting everything right. And as you can see from this SP to that SP, it's very different. And like, you know, there's nothing has to be perfect. The main thing is, that other people don't really know. Like, um, it's, it's, it's more in my head that, it, you know, and Sharky's head that you want it perfect because that's how you created it the first time around, but it really doesn't matter. And if you see tags, like every single tag, uh, uh, like every single tag will basically be different. That's the great thing about art, you know, it's, Everything's different. Like, like if you just wanted it the same, you just print out stickers, maybe. So, uh, I hope you're not getting bored of me chatting. I do chat a lot. <laughs> so, with this, we're going to go. Um, let's get this. So, I always try and put dots. I really should because it stands for Solo Production Zero Talent. I was saying the other day that it looks very much like it says zero which is uh like that's why i put the dots in between but now people go oh it's sp zero and it's like oh, maybe i need a dot in between the s and the p but that's just um it's not really important is it <laughs> if anybody has any questions yeah feel free to f throw them over as well then you don't just hear me blabbing on about uh random stuff uh, just to let everyone know, we will, um, in a follow-up email tomorrow, we'll send you the letter so you can practice yes. uh, to your heart's content. Yeah, so everybody can have a proper go. And uh, so as you can see, it's like I'm just getting, I'm basically doing this quickly because I want to, we've got to go on to the hat and also I want to show you bits and pieces. So you've got like on this one, you've got drop shadow on the S. Um, you've got the uh, outlines, the T, the R, um, you've got um, highlights on the X here. Um, so I want to do something like one of those, another drop shadow on the Y, um, outline on the Z, and here C, D, E, we've got drop shadows coming from above and to the side. So all of these are kind of used quite often in um, your street art, you know, and graffiti you'll see. Uh, what what type of paper are you using now, uh, um, Keith? Is it anything special? Uh, this is, it's basically a uh, Art Gecko sketchbook, um, which is, I think they're really high, I think it's about 200, um, I've forgotten what the uh, measurement is for uh, paper PSM. now. PSM. Yeah. <laughs> Because, <laughs> uh, like, sometimes um, on some sketchbooks, it used to be like 140 I'd use. But uh, I mean, Art Gecko actually do specific um, sketchbooks that are very Posca friendly, which are super glossy ones. So um, as well, but yeah, this one's uh, a regular sketchbook. 
but, but I mean, like I say, they pretty much go on it everything. So um, yeah, I've done everything from the VW, you know, VW Beatles surfboard. So we're gonna and, go. And the stereotypical graffiti style. Um, yeah. How easy is it to develop your own style? Well, originally I was an illustrator, you know, so I came from an illustration background. So it's, uh, I never really did any graffiti when I was younger or anything. And uh, I only picked up a can probably about 12 years ago. So, and I'm 44 now, so I was late to it. So I never did all the tagging and getting, so it's all been built up since then, really. So it's just playing around. Um, I guess it's, do you remember when I was a kid, I always remember like, you know, trying to get myself a signature. So it was like, um, like for your bank card, I remember getting my first bank card, going, oh, I've got to practice. And the first one was just like, just, just said Keith. And it was like really boring, you know, Keith Hopewell, it was just, and then uh, the more and more you practice and you want a bit more squiggle and you want a bit more, you know, you want to put in bits and pieces and um, just make it a little bit more exaggerated, I guess, like some of the things. So the, the Z, you know, it could have just been a Z but we've made it Z, like, you know, so it's you're just exaggerating certain parts. Yeah, yeah, I see. And uh, is there a difference between graffiti and street art or is street art a, a sub category of graffiti? It's a really difficult one to explain because I'm not even entirely sure I am totally understand. I, I think graffiti artists generally come from a back, background of uh, you know, going out from a, a young age and going out and doing it and getting their names up. For, like, whereas one graffiti artist once said to me that the difference was um, that people who um, who do street art, like basically uh, want to paint and have cups of tea with their nana while they're doing it, while a graffiti artist wants the adrenaline and they want to get out there and spray paint like and, and run from the police. Like, whereas um, street artists are more like, you know, have a cup of tea with your nana and and not need to run because it's a legal wall like I, I mean I'm not entirely sure how true that is but that was what somebody told me and I, I quite liked it because I, I definitely love the cup of tea with a nana over running from the police <laughs> partly because you get to finish your piece as well like what's the point in starting a, a wall and then having to run so mm -hmm. coming in at a later age I've always um, you know come from a legal sort of side like I say I was an illustration student at uni so um so i've had to like learn and base myself and just build up a, a sort of style i'm going to give it an underline and i always try and drop a little x in it's not necessarily a kiss um it's well it's definitely not a kiss it's uh, just a little it's almost like a full stop at the end All right let's get this and then we can start doing some drop shadow. Drop shadows, same as every single illustration I do, I'm very predictable when it comes down to how I do my drop shadows. Um, which I remember being at um, uni and everything and they were always like, you really wanna um, have a light source coming from different directions and but all my light sources all come in from the left hand side over to the right. So you'll see that the highlights are on the left and the low lights are generally on the right. This X breaks that rule because like, the highlight is coming in from a different angle. But yeah, if you look at any of my um, art, whether it's coloured and there's highlights and lowlights, you'll definitely see, uh, which is a problem. Uh, well, it's not really a problem. I mean, it would be a problem if, if I was getting marked by a, a lecturer, I imagine, but generally nobody else notices it except for me. It's like, that's what I was saying about art. It's, like if you create something in your head, most people are not going to know if you've uh, where the light source came from or like, you, you make it up. Sometimes it's fun just to drop in different light sources just to really, you know, upset people. <laughs> um, on, on the nibs, the tips, do they get damaged easily? Uh, the, like, it depends what you're using on. Oh, paper, it's like, it doesn't so much get damaged, but like you do get, as you can see here, I don't know if you can see this, uh, it's getting really close. No, uh, but you've got a little, because it's like a material, you know, um, it slightly comes off as you're going, but only like, you know, but then you just keep an eye on it and take it off. It's like, 
just learning to get get to use anything. So you, you've got a little bit of the nib sort of there, just blow. And also the paint dries as you're working with it. Like so, you might get um, little bits where it's you've got more in. So like you know, but you just you, you're just careful with it. It's basically like using paint. I'm just working fast today because uh, I'd be a bit more careful. Bones down. Bones down. Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, why do things have to go wrong right now? <laughs> it's all right. Just, uh, for some reason, nobody's even touching this thing. It's falling off. Right. Sorry about this. Yeah, hopefully, nobody got to solve, uh, see my conservatory. Because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> Like I say, we're uh, moving things around, so it's a bit of a dumping ground at the moment. Right. Uh, just needs rotating the other way. The other way. <laughs> there we go. So sorry about that. Right. That's okay. Well, that's worked in our favour anyway, because I really wanted it to be more portrait uh, than uh, than landscape. Like, uh, I mean, uh, landscape than portrait. We've got right. another question here. Are you painting it up first this year? Yes, actually, uh, there's um, like Upfest doing like a 95 days of um, Upfest. So a lot of artists are going in over 95 walls over 95 days. And so I'm going to be painting mine uh, in about two and a half weeks, I think, two and a half, three weeks. So that will be down. Um, I've painted, there's one on um, uh, down uh, uh, by, well, uh, sorry, flustered. <laughs> There's one uh, like down in uh, South North Street um, that's uh, painted already, and I'm basically going to be painting over that again. And if you follow me on uh, my page, I've I've got a couple of different sketches, and uh, people get to choose which one they want uh, to be to be on the wall, basically. So it's quite a big two-story building. So yeah, so if you keep an eye out tomorrow, then uh, yeah, that'll be up. So what we're going to do now. Actually, I think I was going to do the outline, but I think we'll do a drop shadow on this first. So we're going to use the, uh, this is not the lightest blue, but it is one of the light blues. The reason I'm doing the drop shadow first is um, because then we can put the outline around the red. When the outline around the red is going to go over the, the drop shadow. It'll make sense as we go. But also the great thing about Posca pens is that you can go over the top of a uh, a color that you've already used so for instance even white um, will go over the top so you can have like you know add some dots in like with white this is one of the larger pens obviously it's great for putting dots in and stuff but that works perfect there and then we're going to start with the drop shadow here so the drop shadow is basically going to be the same image that we've done but if you imagine it's slightly raised and you've got the sun coming in here and then this drop shadow is the shadow that the red would cause does this make sense i don't know <laughs> like as the uh the sun uh puts the shadow on on the actual um uh on the paper sorry i can still hear myself <laughs> right so does this make sense now like i think you can see what i'm trying to do which is the drop shadow. And then after that, we're going to put the, the dark blue outline on. And then I'm going to show you uh, how, how it transfers to a hat pretty well. But I'm not going to color it on a hat. I might do a, a, a slightly different coloration. Like I'm, I'm going to leave it. What I do when I do uh, workshops with kids and they want a name on a hat is I leave it um, empty. So I do the outline around it, leave it empty, and then let them do all the coloring which always works out much more fun. My colouring is generally pretty boring, I reckon, compared to the kids. I've got another question here, Keith. How many pens do you normally go through when you're doing a typical work? I mean, I've got a lot of uh, Posca pens, and um, so I generally, I mean, I've just opened the red, um, and that is nowhere near done, you know, for this, uh, like, that will go on for a lot longer i'm not entirely sure but for this process today we're not going through any we're just going you know just using 
it's as though you're using a biro sort of thing, you know, like you don't expect it to run out after you've written a list or it's generally pretty good like that. But then I do have like a lot of pens, so, um, so yeah, like I, I throw them all in a bag generally and then come back to them and like use it again. And so I never really know, but we, we know for definite that I've just started this red um, and we, we can see how far it goes a lot more we get i don't know you'd be able to color two pages three pages i don't know a lot more than what we've got here i know that doesn't really help and also like because there's different sizes you're going to have like you know a 16k or a pc7m is going to have a lot more paint in and then you've got the smaller ones didn't mention as well just seeing the metallic one you've actually got gold and as well as color and the metallics gold is love those two the glitter pens you've got a bit of everything really um glitter pastels the originals are more vibrant like the red and uh this blue is uh, one of the original colors as well i think this is part of the uh, pastel collection and it's funny because a lot of them my favorites are the pastel collection which is like turquoisey if you see some of the colors on the skate deck the turquoise and the dark turquoise that's some of my favorite colors there so yeah a bit of everything right we're going with the drop shadow again so, um is anybody actually drawing at the same time just out of curiosity If you are, I, I wonder if you're doing a drop shadow at the moment. Right. Yes, yes, we've got lots of feedback, lots of people drawing. <laughs> oh, amazing. Is everybody doing drop shadows? <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> trying. <laughs> oh, <Me amazing>. included. <laughs> it's Claire here, I'm trying as well. Not that oh, they definitely great. don't yeah. look as good as yours. Well, I've just noticed the, um, the comments down in the corner, so that's really nice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, you know, I, I worry because I talk, uh, I talk to the cats all the time, so, and I talk a lot of rubbish to them, so I just <laughs> start talking rubbish or meowing, just like warn me. Got another quick one, Keith. Um, how yeah. many things have you designed? How many? How many things have you designed? So, I don't know if, if actual street art. Oh, wow. Have um, you designed in your time? Would it be hundreds? Wow, so or? many. I mean, I had to put together a folder the other day of um, different pieces that I'd uh, done because it, at some point I'm going to be going against a, a computer. Like, so the computer needs to have a certain amount of your artwork. It's trying to recreate my artwork. So they asked to get a folder of at least um, 50 p pieces and that was just easy. It was like, yeah, no worries, 50 pieces. And uh, I've been freelancing for 10 years plus, I think now. So... Wow, yeah, I, I've probably got ridiculous amounts. I've got so many sketchbooks. Like, and the other day I went through a sketchbook in 45 days. I think that was my, uh, the fastest I've ever gone through a sketchbook, but that's because I'm working on a project, so. So yeah, uh, lots and lots, I've done lots of designs. Like, in, the problem is, it's like when you get to this point, what do you do with them all? It's like, I, I've got them under, a lot of them under my bed and it's just like, how long am I gonna keep them for? Like, Maybe the ceiling's going to fall in one day with the, the weight of them all. It's like, I really should get rid of them. But yeah, I don't know. What does everybody else do with theirs? Like, uh, it feels bad to throw them away. But, and, but I guess with social media, you know, these days you can see your old artwork. And it's... And uh, yeah, I don't know. It just feels bad to throw them away. We just had somebody, uh, Sorry? I was going to say, we had somebody tuning in from Canada. Unfortunately, they've had to leave us for an appointment, but that's oh. very exciting that we've got international uh, yeah. tonight. I've got a lot of friends in Australia, so you never know. Some mm -hmm. of those guys might. So the drop shadow is almost done now, as you can see. And then we're going to put on... Well, actually, 
didn't really start working on the hat at some point. So maybe we'll get the hat done and come back to this. But what I'm going to do with the hat is I'm basically going to recreate, I keep saying basically, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I just noticed that. And um, yeah, I'm going to put the, the outline I'm, I'm going to put in in blue around the red is what I'm going to do on the hat in a second. So let's finish this drop shadow quickly. And we can come back. So yeah, it's, I mean, with the, um, the speech marks at the side, at the X, like it's, it's just little additions just to throw in, you know. Uh, when I do artwork, I've got like certain um, symbols, like I, I like to put in, I like to put in the little X, like um, sort of like a little X like that. And then I've got like a little cartoony skull that I put in um, on artwork and you'll see it on most of my stuff, this guy. So cartoony skull, eggs, sometimes love hearts, um, lightning bolts like that. Just little things that you'll often see. So it's fun to add them into artwork so people can see them and recognize your work through them really. So let's get this going again. Yeah, if, if it starts to dry up, and it doesn't mean it's run out. It just means you need to put the lid back on, take it again and dab it like I'm doing here. So let's do that so you can see. And then that gets the pen going again. So you don't have to have a dry uh, nibbed pen. But I know that the first time you use it, you might go, is that ran out already? And it's like, no, no, you just need to uh, get more paint coming through. Right, so here we go. The end of that. And you don't have to be too neat because the thing is, you're gonna put the outline on after anyway, so the outline will bring it all together. Right, take again, new pen. This is a thinner, thinner nibbed pen and we're gonna go onto a hat. So I'm gonna get the pen ready, find. And just pull too much paint through. So just be careful, I just noticed it on there. Like, so if you do, just dab it on your, uh, your piece of paper that you have for dabbing. Right, and then here we go with the hat. So we're going to try and recreate this again. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go exactly the same because um, it, it's art and it's supposed to, you know, everyone's supposed to be different. It's not a printout. If it was a printout, we'd just go straight in. So we're going to get the, we're starting with the speech bubble, uh, not speech, uh, speech mark, sorry. And then we're going to go with the S. And then from there, it's going to be uh, so with the S. I'm just working on this quick. I think I've got a cat hair attached to my to the hat. This is a problem. I've got cats, and the hair attaches to everything. With this, it's um, it's generally not doesn't bleed too much on this hat. It has slightly, um, but that's not a problem for coloring anyway. And I am working quick on this one at the moment, so it's not as neat as it would be. But um, yeah, so we're going to get the. And then what? What I do with this is so. Uh, if you're working out, um, this is a separate, a different way. With this one, we we did a sort of scraggly writing first, and then fat, uh, you know, um, thickened that up. With this one, we're going a different direction, which is like where people can actually color it th uh, themselves. So, um, so you basically got to do the outline rather than color it for them before. Because otherwise, all they'd be doing is putting an outline on, which isn't as exciting as coloring it. So I'm told. So here we go. We got this P. Yeah, you can see my lines are a bit all over the place because I'm trying to get it done quick so I can get back to the other one as well. One of my um, tags, so my tag is SP0, uh, as you can see here, but I also tag SP with a love heart. 
like that. And so just for quickness today on this one, we might actually go with that one for, for this, for the hat. So very scratchy, I'm afraid. I'm just trying to be quick. Get these in. And then I generally like to put a circle around there. There you go. So you've got SP on a hat. So you can do your own hats and then uh, you pass it on to whoever or you can colour it yourself. Like um, so as you can see. It colors pretty good on there. And uh, what I do is, because you're going the opposite way around, uh, put the outline back on after. So you don't have to be too careful. So you can take, you can go over the lines and it doesn't really matter too much because you're gonna put the blue back on anyway. Also, it's another example of how the dark, uh, the lighter colors go over the darker colors. So but anyway, for now, let's go back to, Line on here. Has anybody got any questions or anything about uh, how it works on? Like, there are different when you're working with the, uh, with this product on different um, things. Like, there are different ways of like. So, if you're going to uh, draw on glass, which you can draw on glass, like on a, uh, an actual glass, then uh, it goes in the oven, like after uh, to set. Uh, so then you can you know uh, wash the glass afterwards. Um, you basically bake it in the oven. Same with uh, mugs, you can draw on mugs. I always think that's a great idea for kids' parties. Basically a, a whole bunch of blank mugs and a whole bunch of um, uh, Posca pens and then just let everyone go crazy, create their own artwork on, on mugs. We've done it with baubles in the past as well. That was good fun. Like when it gets closer to Christmas, let everyone create their own. Um, if you draw on a t-shirt, uh, you turn it inside out once it's dry and you iron the back that sets the uh, the paint uh, the Posca paint on the um, on there so you can wash it as well I think that's just answered one of the questions we've had about if you have to treat material to draw on it. oh uh, um, you, you basically go straight on to the material but afterwards yeah I mean preferably a clean t-shirt I guess really but uh, yeah, mm. afterwards you just um, iron it on uh, turn it reverse it and iron on the back what about feathering on material? Is that an, an issue or? There's minor, like uh, like you can see I've just uh, drawn on here, but I was really scratchy and quick. So that, that is, but then once you, um, like, you know, build the uh, the paint around the areas and uh, you can get rid of that as well. So, um, so yeah, no, they're, they're great on like hats. I've, I've done a lot of hats. <laughs> I think in one day mm -hmm. I did probably about 150 hats. Wow. And then, yeah. Uh, and do Posca pens blend well? Uh, yeah, I've seen some amazing blending. I'm not very good at blending myself. I'm more of a blocky sort of artist, like um, yeah. all, uh, block colours, but like some people have done some amazing work with blending. And uh, yeah, and the good thing is that if the nib does get, like, so if you were to put the pen going, I want quite a lot of paint out here. So if you get the paint going on there, and then you get a different colour, so the light of blue. It's not blending at the moment, but it does. <laughs> so you can see, there you go, it is blending. But, You can get a certain amount, and also, uh, so that's pretty cool actually. Um, if you do get it on the nib as well, just uh, see, just uh, double away until the other color's gone. So there you go, that's back to normal, and there you go. Just the darker blue off there. Also, you can go, you know, like as you can see here, we're going over one color with another. Which is why I always think it's more like a, a acrylic than a uh, than a, a a marker. Like marker pens always leave like a streak, don't they? But this is definitely a paint. 
So yeah, we're just going to put on the outline. So I hope I'm uh, being good with both and explaining the, the product that I'm using and also explaining how to do uh, the writing. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that should be what, what you're going to get from today. <laughs> You forget that they're pen, yeah, don't totally. you, Keith? Because they come in a pen. It's quite easy yeah, to forget. No, that. that's it. Like you know, and, and like when I first started using it, I was originally using it. Um, so I'd be using a mixture of emulsion, acrylic, and and Posca pen, like on canvas, like so. But as, as you start working on different things, I don't really use much acrylic or emulsion anymore. The range has expanded as well with Posca, so uh, it used to be there was uh, just the, the main colours, like so it was basically a, this red, this blue, but now there's like a, three or four blues and there's like a whole pastel range and yeah, there's a lot more than there was, so you've got a lot more choice. Only thing I would say, if, if Posca's listening, could you please do more skin tones for me? Because <laughs> we've got like a dark brown and a beige, and that's it, you could we could do with some colours in between. This is where the uh, uh, the blending would come in handy. Do they um, do they work with artists such as yourself on like R and D, as it were? Um, I'm not sure because the product development side goes on in Japan so I guess they do over in Japan but there's there's not so much of the product development um, in the UK or Europe or yeah it's funny as well because the, the product was um, I think it's been going around 15 years in the UK um, whereas like in certain uh, European countries, it, it, like France, people grow up with it. Like, and they're just like, oh yeah, I've had it for years and years. And it's like, oh really? But, um, but it's getting bigger and bigger every single year. Every time I talk to people in America, it's uh, like going over there as well. I've got American friends and they're just like getting into the use of the pens too now. So it's interesting to see it, uh, you know, going from strength to strength. But once you try it, you, you realize it's actually a really good product. So, and like, I was lucky that I was working with it before I had to um, promote it because, <laughs> like, otherwise, sometimes you might feel like, oh, how can I promote this product if you didn't like it? But luckily, I do like it. So, it was, it was one that I used and it was easy to promote. And also, if, if you actually use it uh, yourself, you know the tips and how to, you know, how to, uh, Put it on different, like, like you know, the whole lacquer, lacquer things and lacquer after, uh, like sneaky little tips that just come in handy. But that's just um, using a product, like you know, you get used to it. Same with anything. I think we've got one of your fans or uh, friends here. Somebody asking about after the robot apocalypse. <laughs> your awesome comic book hero it's it's basically a comic book well when i was working on walls um quite often i do like cartoony characters then i decided i wanted to do something a little bit more comic bookish so it was uh mostly based on people on motorbikes uh in an apocalyptic wasteland where you had big robots as well and things like that and uh i've done quite a few walls with with this theme and um I have started working on the actual comic, but um, it's just a pet project that I do whenever I've got the time, and I generally don't have a lot of time, so I haven't done a page in since September, I think, last year, which is really bad. But I've got uh, probably about 50 pages done, like in black and white, but I need to colour them and text. So I think maybe it's a project that might be finished, and, and I want to get all 10 comic books, so that would be... Uh, 240 pages uh, done before I release it and considering I'm on 50 oh that's not too bad I guess but yeah it's, it's gonna be a while but for now uh, I will always be doing illustrations and uploading those and uh, and working on walls with the same theme as well the, the great thing about working um, on a painting with, with this theme as well is that you can tell a story in one image so 
it's, it's kind of like a comic book cover where you look at the cover and you see the characters that are in there and you see like what's going on and you well, it's, it, maybe if you didn't get to read what was in there you could imagine the story yourself though so that's that's what I like to do with a wall Let, leave it there so that people can like there's many that, that well, actually, nobody's read the comic except for me at the moment because it's in my head. So, like, nobody really knows what's happening. But you see, like, people getting on their bike and you see a big robot in the background and you think, right, they're escaping. Or maybe they're friends, you know. Yeah, everybody makes their own story, I guess, which is quite nice. Although with the title being uh, After the Robot Apocalypse, you kind of see a robot and you think it's probably best to run. So, yeah, we're getting there with the outline. I'm not sure we'll have time for highlights, but like, uh, but generally, I'll do an example of a highlight. Let's do that now, quickly. Right, another pen, lid on, shake. Remember the lid on, shake. And then, oh, see, so sometimes when you dab, you get a, a, um, a lot of paint coming through at once, and so you end up with a big drip like this. Doesn't matter as long as you're not doing it on your actual artwork. If you dab your pen on your artwork, you might get paint coming out, and that could be a problem. Although you can always fix it, because the great thing about Posca is you can go over the top of the previous color um, with a new color, so it's never really a problem. So in the same way that, like, again, I should have done the outline after this, but um, I wasn't sure if I'd have time. So the same way as you've got the drop shadow coming from be uh, behind the red, here we've got it as though the sun is hitting the edge of the red. So everything, like, and basically I'll put the, the dark blue on after again, but everything on the uh, left-hand side and the top we're going to put highlight on like this so with with the s it would stop about there this is all a bit messier than normal because you know time we just um explaining so there we go uh, this this is the highlight and then on this side if you think that side's getting it and so this side here would also be getting a highlight and again here and we're going to put it like I say it's a little bit messy but I would neaten it up with the red so I go back over the top with wait for it to dry but on this occasion just for speed just to neaten up, up the edges and then I'll go back over with the blue just to sort out the outlines you're supposed to wait for it to dry but it does work uh, without <laughs> Like, so just for quickness though, just to show you. So let's go back to the highlights again. We're going left. And I know I said on top, and that's technically probably underneath, but you know, like I said, it's, uh, you, you're making the artwork. So just go with, with what you want, really. It's, uh, it's funny, I always remember one time, you know, because people can take things too literally, like when it's there, and I remember drawing, um, something that was um, a perspective based and there was a, a house and a person and one of my friends like said uh, uh, where's the house the same size as the person and it's like well it's not but but it could be I guess it depends on how you, on your view of of uh, the world it's good that we've all got different uh, viewpoints because it makes things interesting so yeah just go along with what you what makes you happy you know so highlights where you want highlights low lights where you want but again saying about low lights that is something else we could drop in sometimes with purple on red is quite actually that's a light purple we'll go with the darker one so where you've got the highlights coming in from the top left uh, the low lights so the shadow would be the bottom right so if you can so generally you put the shadow around everywhere that's like that 
So then it gives it even more depth. So you're going, uh, adding levels and levels to your uh, piece. And this goes for everything, not just writing. This goes for uh, if I'm drawing a, a character. So the other day I drew a character and it's just black and white. And then I started to put shadows in and highlights and stuff. And all of a sudden it gives it a lot more depth. As you can see from this, it is very messy at the moment. So you'll have to excuse that, but it's just for quickness, just to give you an idea. But yeah, like we were saying earlier, you could uh, have a go at this yourself tomorrow or just play around really and just create some, some letters for yourself. It doesn't have to be your name. Uh, it could be your favorite food, pizza or anything. Just, you know, it's funny because uh, I remember one time we were doing uh, hats for kids and uh, like because it's putting names on hats and someone uh, turned around, uh, one of my colleagues said to the child, oh, hello, Timothy or whatever. And like the mum was like, how do you know the name? It's like, it's on the hat. So yeah, careful wearing a hat with your name on. I might just blam uh, talking rubbish at the moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> keeping myself entertained. Oh, that's good that you can go over with a lighter colour as well. Being yeah, go straight on. It's uh, no worries at all. I, it's like with, with the dots. I did smudge that one, did that dot, so. But yeah, it's, it's a great thing that you can just go straight back over the top. So you could, you know, you could write SP zero again over the top of this because it's pain you know uh, but um yeah i definitely think that its closest relative has got to be acrylic like because it dries so quick as well it, but it's it's just so much more uh, liquid based than acrylic which can be quite thick and um you know gloopy got a question about posca oil pencils do they layer on top of posca I have used yeah. the pencil, but I've not experimented with putting one on top of the other. But I think that, like, I, when I use them, I don't remember them being oil pencils. I thought they were just pencils, but I could be totally wrong or missing a product. Uh, my my general expertise is basically the pens more than anything. Um, when I used the pencils, yeah, I thought they were an, a regular coloring pencil rather than an oil based. But I might be wrong but I'm not sure that any pencil would go over the top of paint. Not sure. I might be wrong there. Like the problem is because I found a product I like, I generally use this product and you know, other people probably know more about other products than I do. So yeah. So as you can see here, I'm just writing the great thing about, um, graffiti is uh, like a lot of tagging it just gets tagged over again and again so you can build up you know just writing the same thing so I'm basically just writing my name again if you do get a little bit of uh, pink coming through just give it wait wait for a second till it dries and then go back over the top again and you'll get a cleaner crisper white sort of doing things for, for quickness so if we start putting the outline back on what time are we on now? We've still got, like, it's up to you guys whenever, like, because we're just giving, it's just been giving some sort of ideas and we've given everyone the main ideas now to go along with what, whatever they want to do. So it's good. But yeah, I don't think I'll put all the drop shadows on. this is part of my control freak like I always use a thinner uh, nib but then go over it and over it and over it to get a thicker line which I've got so many friends who just go why don't you just go in with the thick line and it's like well I always find I've got more control because like things like this like you know if I'd gone with the thicker line straight in then that would have been a mistake but it's not because I always go over and over again so that's covered up that for me it's, it's more control So we're getting there. I don't want to go over the white just yet because 
it might not be quite dry. But yeah, generally, if this was like a finished piece, I would definitely go put the highlights on everywhere, the low lights on everywhere, go back in and put the outlines back in again. I hope this all makes sense. But you've got all different ways, you know, you can add to this uh, to make it more interesting. Like that is the beauty about graffiti writing. It just makes it a bit more interesting in different ways, you know. You can add like a second color and do like a split uh, tone. That was always a classic, making it look more chrome. But yeah, so on this one, we're getting there now with the drop shadow. I think it's it's got a graffiti edge to it. But again, a graffiti artist would pro, like, probably uh, just dis disagree and tell me to go and have a cup of tea with my nana, so. We're getting there. You can hear <laughs> when I go quiet, you can actually hear the scratching of the pen on the paper. You just notice that. Yeah, see that again, going with a second. You can thicken up the lines as much as you want, basically. And I, a lot of people would find it just quicker and easier to go. Like, but uh, I use uh, Posca Uniballs quite often, and um, yeah, not Posca Uniballs, uh, Mitsubishi Uniballs, um, and uh, like for, for things, and I always use the thinnest ones to get and build up and build up. And I could just use a thicker pen straight away. And it's, I don't know why I don't. I think it's a control thing. I'm a, a perfectionist with the artwork, <laughs> like generally, not with this piece. So you can see as well, you're neating up certain areas, so bits that looked a bit messier. It just gets neat with the outline straight away. So we're gonna get the outline on the here. But yeah, there's so many different variants. Again, like, you know, putting in a second sort of um, M within it, and then you've got the two tone across there, um, like adding in shapes and bubbles and things. I mean, you could even go for bubble writing. So that was always a classic um, from the eighties. This is just uh, my go-to writing, I guess. So. Almost there. You can see how it goes straight over the top so nicely. I'm gonna go over the white in a second uh, where I wrote the second SP0. Oop, I've gone in, yeah, it wasn't dry. Did think that, but again, it's not really a problem because you can go back over it later. Any, uh, anything you mess up or put your finger in, you can generally go over the top of. So it's not quite dry, but I'm just finishing the piece for you. Whilst you're just finishing up, okay, if it's Claire, <laughs> um, I was just thinking that people may want to ask the question that I asked you the other day, uh, but they perhaps uh, weren't sure whether they could. Um, and, and I asked you the, the perhaps slightly uh, silly question about whether or not you'd met a very famous graffiti <laughs> artist that is uh, local to you, a certain Banksy. I thought uh, you might want to just tell the tale. <laughs> many, many moons ago I did, like back in the 90s, like late 90s, I was at uh, an exhibition opening at a bar, well, it was a bar gallery that I used to work in called the Arnolfini. Anyone who knows Bristol will know the Arnolfini. Um, and at an exhibition with another artist walking around, an exhibition opening, and there was a guy there um, and with a pork pie hat and he was, came over to chat to my friend and I left them to it. As you do, you just go, yeah, I'll, I'll go and have a look at some of the artwork and leave you guys chatting. And I came back and my friend was just like, that Banksy, he's a character. And <laughs> must talk to more people with pork pie hats. This is the <laughs> lesson. There's definitely a life lesson in that, I think. 
yeah <laughs> <laughs> very good i'm loving the highlighting and the low lighting yeah it's really it's fantastic it's such a great technique i didn't feel like i could do any of this to start with my letters look nothing like yours i have to say can we but, see them? um no, I'm not showing you. I've, no, because I've vandalised a page. I haven't actually done my name. I was just doing different random letters to practice. So I'm not showing you. Maybe off, maybe off camera later. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely need a bit more practice. But the, high, the low lighting and the highlighting just it, it adds real kind of impact to something that's relatively simple, relatively easy for me anyway to have a go at. So that's brilliant. You have to do it like, you know, you think that if you're going to go with like a low light on a red, you'd have to use a dark red, but like a purple white is amazingly on it. And, you know, there's different things you could do a yellow highlight on. I think that this guy here, um, he's got like a little yellow highlight on the red. Oops, sorry. There we go. Yeah. So you can see the top of his head. He's got like, and he's got the same shadow coming in from the left to the right, so you've got the shadows underneath his eye and around here, and then you've got, there would be a white highlight, but you can see the white, uh, the yellow there. So yeah. it's just fun to throw in different colors together. Generally you would go, probably need a pink to highlight it, but no, just throw in a yellow. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank, thank you very much. It's, I think you could probably keep going all night. I'm sure there'll be people that will what want to stay on and, and watch but I'm just I'm conscious of time yeah, and yeah, just uh, letting everyone practice I think as I want to do we will be sharing the alphabet can you pull your alphabet yes that you did for us it's gorgeous so we will be sharing an image of this with everyone that joined and we'll also be sharing the video in the next couple of days and I think Keith has sent some amazing artwork as well as examples of what you can do so um, that would be fantastic. Um, someone's just sent us the, the, a message, you're the best graffiti teacher with a little heart. <laughs> that, that says it all. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you Thank very Thank you much. very much for that message uh, from one of our te attendees. I love it. But yeah, um, but so yeah, we'll go on. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, uh, we, I did share the, um, the colouring in pages with you, which you just mentioned. So that yeah. could be, you know, people could colour in or try and draw those characters in their own style as well or, or anything. Just give you inspiration. That would be brilliant. So we'll share that. We'll definitely share that with everyone. Uh, it'll probably be tomorrow now. Ho hopefully tomorrow, if not Friday, definitely by the end of the week. And um, we'll get it out to you as soon as we can, so we can continue to practice. Um, and I think the other thing, we'll also share some feedback with um, Uniball, who make Coscas, that we need some more skin tone colours. And one of our attendees would like some even finer tips. Uh, than there are in the range currently so we can pass no really tips. I don't have one with me at the moment but they go down to like uh, basically uh, fine uh, no, uh, I forgot what the tip is but uh, like you know very tiny little tips as well I, I, th I think I think I don't I haven't got the message still in front of me I think it was like a a, a 0.1 mil or something someone was like li oh, literally oh, yeah, yeah like that, really that really like yeah. really yeah. really fine but some. we'll check the message before we send the the feedback um so thank you and if anyone missed anything or just wants to go over it again again we'll share the recording of the session as well so everyone can continue to have practice we would love to see your creations now i know i've just said that i'm not going to be brave and share it on camera but if you would like to be brave and um uh, and i'm sure you are very proud and should be proud of what you've done then please share uh, what you've created on social media with even if you want to go up and practice first before you do it we'd love to see your um creations and we'll share them if you're happy for us to do that um, more widely as well um so thank you so much Keith, for joining us love it um i hope um that we'll be sharing some more of your work in the not too distant future and um also you might be helping us out with some office decoration as well which could be very exciting we could share with everyone if we, if, if we make that happen so that'd be great um, we will share more on upcoming events and workshops on social as well. So please follow us on there if you're not already. Keith, if people want to follow you and keep up to date and see some of your artwork and creations, where's the best place to have a look? Uh, like either on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Um, at It's basically at SP0. So let's write it. And we can share that with everyone as well when we do our follow up if you're happy for us to do that 76 that is on hotmail on facebook there we um, go so brilliant <laughs> so that is the end of our session for now
um, as I say, video to be shared, follow up alphabet um, so you can all practice this. And we will hang on uh, on the session just for a few more minutes if anyone's got any further questions, just to make sure we don't leave any of you hanging on with questions unanswered. But for now, thank you very much, Keith. Um, that was amazing, loved it. Um, hope we'll, hopefully we'll get to do another one in the not too distant future. And thank you everybody for joining us. We hope to see you soon. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>